Hi there, welcome to the new lecture on designing your solutions with Data Factory, which is again comes under in integration solution. So this is a part of integration solution. Let's understand what exactly Azure Data Factory. Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based ETL. ETL stands here for extract and E stands for as a extract and you can also do the transform T for and it you can load. So this is where Azure Data Factory is a based on a cloud-based ETL. So you could use this data for integration for a service that can help you to you know create and schedule data-driven workflows. When I say data-driven workflows, we could also also call this as a pipeline sometimes so this can actually work based on a different data sources if you could see here there are different data types are available let's first understand what you can get as a benefit uh, with the Azure data factory so it is basically used for two purposes one would be the Azure uh, data factory would be useful for orchestrator your data moment and also for the transform of your data at any given scale so now let's have a look on this workflow or the pipeline whatever we call it so there are four components are available for this pipelines or the workflows so let's understand this the first step would be the connecting and collecting this is nothing but the data data injection and this is the first step to collecting data from different data sources like Hadoop or maybe from a cloud or SQL so different places you're getting the data and you're just collecting now you need to you know transform and enrich whatever you have uh, collected this so once you prepare this information or this data you are actually uh, uh, moving this data to the next flow uh, flow of the data transfer which is you know transforming and enriching so you will use the compute services like Azure Data Breaks and HD Insights or Hadoop to you know transform that data specific and then you will also have something called the continuous integration and delivery or CI or CD uh, which is available with the help of GitHub or any other Azure DevOps uh, specific and you could you know enable uh, by using this uh, continuity uh, continue, continuous integration and delivery option ci cd options for your etl processing the data uh, incrementally before publishing the data to your analytics services so a later point you are actually publish once you publish actually you could you know use a monitor option so when we talk about the monitor you could actually use the monitor from azure portal uh, using the pipeline for a schedule activities uh, for any failures of that uh, matter now let's understand about the data factory orchestration so we use uh, you know a couple of words like you know orchestrator so let's understand that orchestrator this is the best representation i would say you know uh, put it into the uh, normal chat wise so this actually represents uh, with the data factory orchestrating uh, with the ingestion of your data from a different data sources so if you could look at the data may be coming from your on premises or maybe external to your data will be you know just coming to your storage blob and this is where the data will be uh, ingested and then it will uh, store into the azure synapse analy uh, analytics here so when we talk about the azure synapse uh, analytics here uh, this is uh, actually process the data further with analysis and visualization connectors but if you look at uh, these analysis as well as the data storage all of this stuff will be actually connected uh, with the data factory so this is a one shot or one place to monitor or uh, monitor or management interface for your all of your data integration services needs let's now look at the when to use the Azure Data Factory. There are four uh, pillars or four major requirements or we would put it in you know, the cases where we could you know utilize this. So the first one would be the uh, requirements for your data integration. So let's say you have uh, you have a data factory servers 
two communities one is a big data community and relational data warehousing community that's going to utilize your sql server integration services or in short ssis and depending on your organization data needs you would be setting up a pipeline uh, in the cloud for using the azure data factory that can access the data from both the cloud and as well as the on-premises so in fact we actually looked at here this is the best place you know for the data sources the requirement would be the on-premises as well as from a, a cloud from a other external so that's one of the best uh, example or the when to use case i would say and other one would be the coding resources so let's say if you prefer a graphical user interfaces to set up the pipelines uh, then the Azure Data Factory is going to authorizing and monitoring tools uh, is a right fit for your needs. So then you would you know, use the uh, Azure Data Factory because you have a very low coding uh, needs and the code process for working with the data source would be very low. So that's one of the option uh, when you could you know use the Azure Data Factory. And now. Uh, other reason would be the support for multiple data sources. When we say multiple data sources, you know, Azure Data Factory is going to support close to 90 plus connectors to integrate with the uh, disparate data sources. So we did actually look at here uh, one different data source, but it can go up to 90 plus. And coming back to the serverless infrastructure is one other reason to use the data factory. So there are uh, advantages using the fully managed and serverless solution for your data integration. No need to maintain or configure or deploy servers and the ability to scale with the uh, fluctuating workload then it's the best option to utilize the serverless in infrastructure with a combination of data factory from Azure. Now let's also uh, look at these are the ba basically the when to use case. Now let's uh, have a look on the components of Azure Data Factory. So when we look at the data factory components uh, there are uh, close to five different components we could you know talk about it uh, which is gonna uh, to, uh, which is going to very critical or, or it's part of your data factory first one would be the pipelines and the activities so this is nothing but a logical grouping of your activity that's going to perform a task uh, so when a task is going to perform that's a logical uh, activity you're going to you know perform so these activities is in a single processing step in a pipeline as a data factory supports data movement and data transformation and control activities so these all of this stuff would be you know uh, supported uh, with the help of pipelines and activities no other one would be the data set so if you see here the example would be uh, definitely data structure with your data where it's going to store for example maybe in a table or maybe in a file and linked services is uh, other one which is your sql server or hadoop cluster kind of thing so it's going to define your required connection information needed for your data factory uh, that's where it's going to use for your external resources purpose and data flow uh, would be the other option which is going to talk about uh, the data engineers to develop the data transformation logics so they will be using some kind of you know, logics without writing the code for your data flow activities can be operationalized using existing as your data factory scheduling or maybe control flow or monitoring capabilities which are a cool a codeless actually you could you know uh, use those things without the code just the logics to be you know, used as a data engineers and now uh, the last one would be the integration runtimes it's gonna uh, we would we can put it in other way like it's going to be a bridge between your activities uh, and uh, activity and link and services objects uh, it's like a bridge kind of thing there are three types of uh, integration um, we could you know call a runtime uh, and also including the azure and self-hosted and azure um, SSIS. So these are the uh, integration services runtime uh, with uh, respected. Let's try to conclude, you know, what we have learned so far with the real time uh, examples. Let's see the given company in this case, you know, Tailwind Traders as taking an example and they have uh, some of the components are involved for data preparation and the movements so now to just take it as an example this tailwind traders and they have many different type of data sources to connect 
and they needs the data to be ingested and transformed through stored procedures that runs on the data so this is the existing uh, challenge for the tailwind traders okay and finally the data should go or it should be in a push to the analytic platform for analysis purpose let's say this is the given scenario or this is a requirement for your tailwinds so now in this scenario how adf or as your data factory is going to helpful so in this scenario the linked services what is going to happen is link services will be uh, it's going to enable your company to ingest the data from a different sources and it is stores the connection strings uh, to fire up compute services on the cloud so the, uh, on the on demand basis also you can execute the stored procedures uh, for data transformation that's gonna that happens through the linked services uh, in azure ssis and which is the integration runtime environment for your tailoring traders and the data sets components are used by the activities uh, object and activity objects can contains the transformation logic and you can trigger the pipeline which is all the activities grouped together uh, if you want you can also trigger pipeline which uh, which is all the activities grouped together you could do that you can also use the data factor to publish the final uh, final data set to another linked services to consumed by the technology for example here in this case a power bi machine learning purpose so this is where the data factory can be you know, utilized so if you could you know, uh, you know consolidate so this is how the company can be benefited thank you for watching this we will be learning in the next lecture as the design for this data lake